I'd argue Season 6 and 7 brought in some of the most unique and appealing characters from the entire series. Future writers of the show clearly saw their appeal as a lot of them continue to stay relevant in the show, even to this day. I've seen characters like Emily, Spencer, and Salty get high recognition and praise for their development throughout the series, but there's one character I noticed that gets overlooked by these topics. Harvey is a crane engine that is a hard worker who likes to help others and offer advice. He likes working on the railway but can be insecure over some things about himself. This is something he works on over time but overall gives him the qualities of a really useful engine. Harvey is a versatile engine and also a versatile foil. He is constantly flustered with Samson, pleasantly bewildered by Daisy and has a wholesome friendship with Thomas. He's a very grounded character yet open to possibilities. I've always liked Harvey, he always had the best merchandise. He's a character that I've not seen many people discuss. In fact, there's a big argument that CGI ruined him by making him too worrisome. Today, I'm here to see if those claims are true by taking a look at his character journey throughout the show. I've always had a soft spot for the episode Harvey to the Rescue. To me, it felt like a nice type of introduction to a very unique engine. One of the common themes I've noticed between the series' writers is that they always like to note that Harvey is a crane engine, and that they can be two different things at once. This statement will further make sense when I get to the CGI series, however, I thought that Harvey to the Rescue was a very good introductory episode, mainly for the fact that I thought it had an interesting rags to riches sort of story. Like, when he was first introduced, he's kind of seen as a little weird and being the outcast. The engines talk about him to his face instead of introducing themselves, which gives Harvey a little bit of self-doubt regarding his role on the railway. It is really interesting to me because you do kind of see this set off a type of character Harvey is especially later on in the series. A big criticism from the episode I've seen from fans is how the main cast acted towards Harvey. The behavior of the cast, or more so Edward literally saying anything. I wouldn't expect Edward to say that and I do think they could have given that line to literally anyone else and just cut Edward out entirely from the episode. Or at the very least have Edward be on Thomas's side. But they wanted Harvey to have the one loner and sort of outlier from a mean group. So I get that concept. Looking back, half of them aren't really saying mean things. For example, I feel Gordon more so questions his appearance. Surely Sir Topham Hat won't let him pull coaches, sniffed Gordon. And the other engines are just evidently curious on what Harvey does. But them being out of character does not make the episode entirely bad because there is a lot of good and you get a whole new character out of it. I understand fans hesitation with it due to it being written in a really weird way when it comes to the dialogue with the engines. Harvey's different said Henry. He doesn't even look like an engine, said Edward. Surely the fat controller won't let him pull coaches, sniffed Gordon. He's just cranky on wheels, said James. He's not taking my mail, said Percy. Well done, Harvey, said Gordon. Very useful, said James. You can take my mail, said Percy. You see, said Thomas, different can be good. Again, the only issue with the engines is the awkward dialogue because it is very formulaic and very Gordon said, Henry said, James said. So just filler slot for the characters. It didn't feel very within their own character to say specific things they said. This can be apparent with the ending since the ending does feel a little weird where they're like, well done, very useful. So it's a bit confusing. It is a little strange with how the writing is. A takeaway from the episode I've always enjoyed was the next scene in the following morning where the Fat Controller comes to visit Harvey and gives him a heads up that the railway board are coming, in which Harvey responds with Maybe my coming here wasn't such a good idea, sir. Harvey chuffed sadly. Nonsense, said the Fat Controller. But the engines don't like me, I'm too different. The Fat Controller comforts him and tells him that he's a very useful type of engine that has worth and value which makes him feel better about himself by vouching for him. We never saw that side of Topham at that point. We never saw him in a situation where someone felt vulnerable about themselves. We only really saw him telling someone off about their actions. 
I could imagine after that interaction, he'd have a little bit of a soft spot for Harvey, so it's a shame they weren't paired much in episodes after this. Because at that point, he's incredibly vulnerable. He had arrived on the railway and only met two engines, that being Thomas and Percy. And even then, the two engines didn't even properly introduce themselves. It's interesting to note that Percy, while he met him, kind of agreed with the majority of the engines that Harvey looked a little weird, while Thomas was the only engine that embraced him. These two have such a present character dynamic throughout the series, which I will get to later. So when all is said and done and the unintentional accident happens caused by Percy, Harvey eventually goes to help Percy and does his job while at the same time showing the railway board what he could do. The engines come to realize what a valued member he is and how important it is that this mobile crane engine is able to get things done. The fact that he was treated terribly by the engines at first doesn't leave a good impression to him to the railway, but in the end, I still kind of like the episode for the sake of giving Harvey that mindset of confidence and understanding what to do with it. In a bad day for Castle Lock, Harvey is aware of Donald and Douglas's trip and the monster story. He sets up the train at Brendam and comes to their rescue from the landslide. He even has to calm the twins down so they understand he is not the monster, but the rescue team. Leads me to wonder if he set up the breakdown train to look like the monster, judging by how unusual the concept of the breakdown train was. If not, it's quite amusing. In the episode of Peace and Quiet, at this point, Harvey is still a relatively new engine on the railway, but is well acquainted with the Sodor engines. He can be seen as very friendly and helpful in many situations, and is starting to socialize with the engines he works with. This is most notable in the episode where he is first introduced to Murdoch, a newcomer, who likes the quiet. Harvey tries to get to know him, breaking the ice, asking, what's the longest train you ever pulled, or have you ever crashed? He's a crane engine who helps the engines out, so it would be a relevant question to ask and lead to a follow Follow-up question. How many cranes had to bring you back on the rails? What's the biggest accident you've had? While Harvey and Salty were meant to be seen in good faith, Murdoch dismisses all their questions for the sake of a peaceful evening. However, Harvey sticks up for himself, saying, no need to be rude. This shows that Harvey no longer takes insults or rude remarks from anyone, though he can be very hurt by them. At the end of the episode, Murdoch apologizes for his rude comments and is pleased to be in their presence. As a way to make amends with a newcomer, Harvey accepts his apology and gives a warm-hearted response to make it clear that they're friends again. As per his official character bio, he doesn't hold a grudge. He may be a bit hurt, but when amends are made, he's more than happy to accommodate them and make them feel accepted and welcome, which ties back with Harvey's struggles on his first day. I wanted to quickly bring up the song Five New Engines in the Shed. This lyric implies this. Harvey with his crane looks strange, but he'll take this train on the railway. This is a unique lyric. It starts about Harvey's appearance, mainly how he is a crane. Yet, in the second half of the line, he is mentioned to get his wheels dirty and work hard to keep the railway running smoothly. This can be seen as his redemption and tells a story in the series so far. Hit Era by far gave the most roles to him in the series, including CGI. In the introductory episode of Thomas and the Tuba, Harvey has to clean up a mess by Thomas. Already, there are some things established. Harvey grows as a character from season 6. He is used to being insecure about his place on the railway, but now he helps others get out of tough situations. We can see that Harvey not only helps out with the physical mess, but he is a great listener who is willing to help engines with their internal problems, as seen with the episode, Thomas and the Tuba, where he gives Thomas advice, in which Thomas takes it and finds a tuba player in time. Despite being a very short scene, one of my favorite moments from the character is Thomas saves the day. Harvey furthermore shows his care for Thomas when he doubts about being a really useful engine. Harvey arrived to help clear up the mess. Harvey didn't like seeing Thomas so unhappy. I can't go round the difficult bend, Thomas wished sadly. I'm not a useful engine without Annie and Clarabelle. Hmm. You are a really useful engine, said Harvey, and a jolly good friend. This could be a callback to Harvey's introduction episode, as Thomas was the only engine that was kind to him on his first day. With this in mind, he recalls that Thomas will always be a good friend. One may argue it's a really great symbolic depiction of a crane engine. He doesn't just lift you on the track, but he'll lift you back up emotionally too. Harvey's uplifting side can be further seen in Thomas and the Rainbow. 
Harvey tells Thomas how he knew he was in trouble thanks to his friends, which once again puts Thomas's mind at ease, as he thought all his friends he interacted with that day were upset with him. Harvey's message to Thomas lets him know that his friends are always there for him, once more showing a humble side to the crane engine. In Season 10, we are introduced to a new crane character, that being Rocky a new type of rescue crane. He too is dismissed by some of the engines, however engines like Thomas and Percy see the value in him, which might be a small indication that they learnt their lesson after the events of Harvey to the rescue. Rocky, like Harvey, receives insults from the big engines. He is referred to as a newfangled nonsense. It makes for an interesting parallel where a crane engine is dismissed by others and is also feel bad about themselves, only to prove their worth in the end. In the episode Edward Strikes Out, we see Harvey demonstrates his limits. While he can do so many things such as clearing up the lines from common accidents on the railway and re-railing rolling stock and small engines, there are some things that prove too much for him, such as heavy pipes and even Gordon. Harvey consistently makes minor appearances for the next two seasons in the model era. His appearances are either due to the fact he's cleaning the tracks, helping out whenever there is a storm, or doing track maintenance. Overall, Harvey has become an engine that is very caring of his friends. And when they are in doubt, he will do the best he can to help them out. This further shows his growth of his character as from his introduction in Season 6 and how more acquainted he is with the Sodor engines. The episode Gone Fishing was a very unique way of reintroducing Harvey to the series. They decided to reintroduce the character as a special type of engine. I really like the beginning bit where they show all the different types of cranes on Sodor. They show Merrick, then you've got Cranky, and after that you got Rocky. But most of all, you have an engine that is able to go wherever he needs to be, while also having a crane attached to him. Which is interesting because the episode establishes the fact that Harvey does not pull regular trains. In fact, we never see him pull much of anything other than the breakdown train and the occasional flatbed to carry most things off of the line. Whether you see CGI as a different canon or not, it does establish that in either timeline, Harvey hasn't really pulled anything else. The episode acts as a second approach to Harvey to the rescue. Since at this point in time, Harvey has been on Sodor for a while, I feel like it has a reintroduction to how does Harvey prove his worth by being a crane and an engine. Because at most, we have kinda established that he likes to help and or rescue engines, but here we see how he tackles these sorts of jobs he is called upon. At the beginning of the episode, Harvey is poked fun by the twins about how he can use his crane arm for other purposes such as fishing. While he dismisses some of what the twins say, it does bother him to an extent. Despite years later being on Sodor, he's still a little bit sensitive to being called very strange. Our Thomas stand-in is Porter, who gives Harvey advice to look at it as water off a duck's back and not take everything too seriously. I found the conversation consisting of Porter and Harvey unique because it is the setting stone on a thing that he can drag along with him while also being a way he can feel better about himself. I kind of thought it was interesting when he gets into his little accident. His flatbeds are derailed and he's just thinking, oh wow I messed up, but realizes the twins teasing can help him by picking up his flatbeds and putting them back on the rails. Ooh, I hope Bill and Ben don't see me. They would say teasy things. You can pick them up with your hook and carry them if you like. Like fish. Yes, like fish. <laughs> yes, I have a hook. So I can pick up these derailed flatbeds. Ha! Bill and Ben couldn't do that. And that, to him, sort of overcame his insecurity about himself at that point and thus becomes an aspect he can be proud of. When he proves his worth after the fat controller tells him to take the flatbeds to Vickerstown, after having his own accident, he learns that his crane is very useful and gives him the confidence to turn a negative comment into something more positive. This is a continuation of his character arc where he learns to accept himself for who he is, though his opinions changes on himself as the CGI series progresses. Moving on to Harvey's next major role in season 18, Samson sent for Scrap. The episode demonstrates Harvey's difficulty speaking for himself. He questions Samson about things like Sir Tom Matt's car, the stop sign, and the postman's bike as an examples. Ultimately, 
Harvey was correct to assume that these weren't intended for scrap. Harvey's character development can be inferred as slightly different in the model series. Rather than telling engines what he thinks, he gets quiet and unsure about himself. I enjoy the concept of matching characters and maintaining similar dynamics, so I was glad of the attempts with Samson and Harvey. However, when any character is paired up with Samson, the other character has to be a doormat for the plot to continue with Samson's typical nonsense. They briefly continue this little character dynamic in the same season, in the episode Millie and the Volcano, where they help set up the Earl's new dinosaur exhibit. This is the first time we see Harvey in the wrong and feel bad over his actions. After Samson teases Millie over the T-Rex, Harvey lets Millie know that it's not real and only a model. This upsets Millie and it gives the impression that she's a silly little engine. In return, Harvey feels bad about hearing that his words earlier upset Millie and is shown to be remorseful over what he said. Teasing has always been a big thing with Harvey, especially here in the CGI series, so we can see that he's very remorseful with his expression. He realizes that his own words actually hurt Millie. The episode has this very family feel to it, with how Harvey and Samson act like the older brothers who belittle the younger sister, in which case would be Millie. With that being said, the episode also mentions a fear Harvey has, a fear of things being unsafe which adds more to his character. This would make sense as Harvey is an a rescue engine and knows that unsafe practices lead to accidents. After this episode, Harvey went missing for a season or two. He shockingly made no appearances in season 19 and was only seen twice in the background as a cameo in season 20. This parallels the model series as Harvey would have smaller roles with either few lines or none at all. He is involved with a sudden storm though, which is a common setup for his character involvement. Season 21 is where they suddenly push Harvey's appearances into the show once more. Before season 21 aired, there was a lot of speculation at the time Harvey would play a significant role in the special Journey Beyond Sodor. A lot of Harvey merchandise was announced coincide the JBS movie, so fans, including myself, were under the impression he'd be appearing since this special was centered around unusual and experimental engines, much like Harvey. Alas, we know how it truly went. The whole Harvey hype was advertising his season 21 episodes. Though I want to briefly talk about a fan project that did so much justice with Harvey. JBS, how it should be, while a controversial movie for most fans, was able to incorporate the character into the special so well. For one, I really like how they gave Harvey a backstory before arriving to Sodor. His background in regards to working at a steelworks actually ties with his real life basis, also working at a steelworks. Harvey also works with the Experimental Engines Group 2, being sort of an experimental himself. Season 21 was a good season for Harvey fans, and just overall a very fun season. A most singular engine was where we saw the dynamics between Harvey and Daisy. Essentially, the episode is about two engines with unique functions who are brought into conflict with each other due to Diesel's lies. In this episode, we see how Harvey, while seriously out of the loop, takes on controversy involving himself and another engine. When he finally meets Daisy, they both realize that they don't hate each other and can help each other with their problems. After giving each other the stink eye, they both realize what they were doing was a little bit awkward and put their little conflict aside to become the bigger engine and just tackle each other's problems with their unique functions. I love character combos like this, and I love episodes that make me like a character more than I did before. It's a cute TV trope when characters that are meant to hate each other actually end up being good friends. It can be noted Harvey's character shines here, as he does not let Diesel's words put him against helping another engine. He would rather help Daisy than leave her stuck in the crossing gates. It should be noted that Harvey has an insecurity about his crane, and when people talk about it, he can be a little bit shy. But in this episode, it is pushed aside. We see him sort of taking pride about his crane arm. When Diesel taunts him with what Daisy is saying, he's not cowering in fear. If anything, at first, he didn't seem to care much about what Daisy says. This can be a good setup on how he usually gets made fun of for being a crane engine, something he is insecure about. Despite having a three strikes formula feel to it, Stuck in Gear is a very special episode that follows Harvey's insecurities and elaborates how they change over time. While the episode can be a bit about a character for him, it more or less explores a flaw in his character stating that he hates getting attention drawn to him, and hates making a fuss. This characteristic brings a good point, 
As most of the time, we never see much of the engine celebrate Harvey's cleanup, only really getting a pat on the back in Harvey to the rescue, as most of the time the engines rarely thank him. With this in mind, it does explore that even those who help others need help too, and that asking for help is not a bad thing. The final act of the episode leads to a one-on-one -on -one between Thomas and Harvey, who have been great friends since the beginning. A lot of people argue that during this time, Thomas was shoved into the spotlight during the Brenna era seasons. Here, I feel is the most appropriate. In season 6 and 8, there is this growing dynamic where Harvey and Thomas have this strong relationship supporting each other. The last time Harvey has been this vulnerable was in his debut episode. He starts by mentioning how he's thankful for Thomas's rescue, and he hates looking silly. Thomas responds by saying, you're always helping others with your crane. Harvey then reflects on his day, to which Thomas asks why he didn't go to the steamworks. Harvey opens up to his core issue how he did not want to make a fuss about himself, and the core issue he has within the CGI era being teased at. Thomas then consoles him, telling him that no one makes fun of a broken down engine, and making a fuss is what will get the job done. What is wholesome about this interaction is Thomas helps Harvey through his insecurities that he has built up since season 17. It's from this point on where Harvey rarely expresses any forms of insecurities about himself or what he does as an engine. This episode ends with him back to work, feeling the best he has been in a while. Boba didn't have Harvey appear as much. In what I believe to be his final significant appearance, what Rebecca does, Harvey is shown to have a shy attitude when Rebecca compliments him. Here, Rebecca acknowledges his value and worth, making him feel flattered and ensuring the modest conclusion to his run of insecurities since season 6. Notably, there's a recap of the episode Gone Fishing in the conclusion of what Rebecca does, which explains the author's goals for the episode. Harvey is made fun of for being able to operate both as an engine and a crane, but after discovering how beneficial his crane is, he comes to the conclusion that appearances are irrelevant. Harvey's last speaking role was in the episode World of Tomorrow. Nothing worth noting here, but his final scene is pretty amusing. I'll be back soon. I need to find him uh, and Harvey too. Thomas? Did uh, someone say my name? And that was the end of Harvey. I think. So, Harvey and All Engines Go is interesting to say the least. They changed his name, his gender, his entire livery. Huh? What's that? That's not Harvey. That's Carly. In all seriousness, I've seen the discussion on why Carly was chosen to be drastically redesigned to be the new Harvey of the reboot, when instead of just bring Harvey back. To put it simply, Harvey, in Mattel's eyes at the very least, was probably not seen as marketable enough. Carly is a girl, which would provide gender diversity to the main cast, and is aesthetically more pleasing in children's eyes with her modern design and bright yellow color compared to Harvey. I think it would be a crime if I didn't acknowledge Carly and her massive change with her transition to AEG. I am even hesitant to call her the same character from what she once was in CGI, as None of her characteristics from that era were incorporated into the reboot, including her design. What I will say though is, what was the point of making Carly completely different if they were just gonna make another Carly clone anyways? That being Tess, why didn't they just make Tess the on-rail crane? I will never understand. In conclusion, Harvey is a character that has demonstrated varying degrees of pride and insecurity throughout the series. His first day on the railway was met with dismissal and upturned noses. His character begins to feel insecure at this point, which he learns to get over in the show as it goes on. He does eventually come to realize there is no significance to his appearance, but he will find frequent tauntings annoying. This, in turn, has demonstrated how his insecurities have changed over time, moving from appearance to performance work. Even though he can be extremely bashful about it, he eventually learns to accept the compliments by season 22. 
I don't think I have a definitive favorite version of Harvey as he's remained pretty consistent throughout the show, which I feel demonstrates on why he's such a lovable character. Before I end off this video, I'd like to give a huge shout out to my friend Anthony who helped me a lot with the script while making this video. He's a big Harvey fan himself, so I couldn't imagine anyone better to help me with the video. Links to his socials will be down below. Thank you.